Hello my darlings and welcome to the Reject Demon Toko. This is a prelude to a four part game that is going to be coming out about a demon who gets thrown out of hell because she's real bad at being a demon. Uh, it's got rock music in it, it's got fantastic art. It kind of reminds me of Soul Eater. If any of you watched that or read the manga, the character designs are super cool. Uh, so I figured, you know what, let's give it a shot. I mean, it's gonna be pretty short because it's leading up to the actual four part series, so. Yeah, I figured it was worth checking out, seeing if it's our jam, and then when the actual game starts coming out, we can maybe play it if y'all are into it. So, let's give it a shot, yeah? Dope. Boop. Toko, it's not that bright. Stop squinting and look ahead of you. She takes a few moments to adjust to the light and a bleary shape slowly comes into focus. Here you go, Toko. Here goes what, Daddy? <laughs> what? My dad looks awesome! <laughs> the tall demon sighs, running a hand through his hair before putting on a big smile. Here's your first soul. She's gonna die soon. It's your job to do the reaping. But I don't want anybody to die, Daddy. The demon's smile grows a little strained before he crouches to meet his daughter's eyes. There's nothing we can do, Toko. If this girl is supposed to die, we have to be here to receive her soul. It's our job. It's very important. But she... It's the natural order of things for these humans to die, sweetie. But if she dies without us being there for her, her soul will be lost to wander the earth forever. So we're actually, like, kinda helping her. He stands up straight again, brushing off his knees. Toko remains unenlightened by his argument. That may seem just a little bit hard for you now. By ferrying these souls, we actually do a lot of good for the humans. It's also what we require to survive. How come? Clay reaches out and pats her on the head. Like any kid, she often asks the hardest questions. Well, uh, <coughs> well, as you get older, you'll realize it, Toko. Us demons don't eat what these humans do. As you grow, you'll depend more on helping these souls to hell so that you can become big and strong. And that's good, right? He puffs up his chest, taking in the small kind of victory of a father trying his best and turns Toko around, nudging her toward the girl in the distance. It's the only thing to do. Now go on, there isn't much time. The tall demon leaves Toko to perform her task. She takes a determined breath and focuses ahead. A little human girl, oblivious to the dangers present, is walking toward the busy street. Aww, she looks concerned, sniffling as she rubs her eyes. She takes another step off the sidewalk and into the street. Huh? Hey! Toko grabs her hand and pulls the girl back. Oh. Uh. The human girl looks around to the demon in surprise. Why are you crying? Uh, I lost my ball. Your ball? The girl sniffles again, nodding fervently. She squeezes Toko's hand. Oh, my ball. I lost it somewhere. It's shiny and blue. Toko pauses, looking at the girl and then at the busy road. A truck zooms by a little too closely, and they take a cautious step back. The human world it sure is scary, huh? Toko looks suddenly quite nervous before glancing down at the hand she's holding and letting it go. The girl giggles. Uh, sorry. What? The human world? I, uh, you're missing your ball, right? Toko quickly changes the subject while puffing up her chest and patting it with her hand. I'll help you look for it. If we look together, we'll find it real fast. Okay. Thanks for finding my ball. The girl smiles, hugging it tightly to her chest. No problem, no problem. You're okay, right? The girl looks at the ball and then back up at Toko, humming. What? Your eyes are real weird. They're my dad's eyes. I took them out of his face. She leans in, curious. Where are you from? Uh, demon land. Duh. Huh, demon land? Are you a demon? I heard they're scary, but you're like kinda nice. Toko huffs, twiddling her fingers. Demons can be scary sometimes, but I'm real brave. Toko pauses a bit and looks at her feet. Actually, Daddy says I'm supposed to find a soul. A human soul or something. I wasn't listening. The girl's eyes glow, glow wide with curiosity, and she shuffles in closer. A human soul? Well, Bobby says everybody's got a soul, so I doubt it's going to be real hard to find one. Yeah, but I don't think I can, you know, just, like, take one. But you'll help me find my ball. How about you take my soul? Calling it. 
She places her ball down, cautiously setting it between her feet as though it might try to roll away without her. Then she pulls out a scrap of paper and a bright red crayon. I'll give you mine. You could borrow it if you want. You could show it to your daddy. It's definitely a soul. You just put your soul on a piece of paper? Yep, here we go. <laughs> While she's sure this couldn't have been what Clay meant, Toko grabs the scrap. I... The girl gives a proud nod, picking up her ball again. I don't mind giving it to you since you need it, right? It'll super work. Uh, uh... Toko pauses. This girl, Nadia, she must be like a goddess or something. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Nadia. Glad I could help you find your ball. I gotta go now, though. My dad... Well, he's probably wondering why I'm taking so long. Aw, uh, any time, buddy. Nadia shuffles a bit. Thanks, Toko. I should go home. You're a super cool demon. The girl scampers off. Toko briefly looks down at the piece of paper and beams. <laughs> Toko! Ah! How did it go? Toko holds up the paper and beams. I got it! Clay looks puzzled for a moment and tilts his head, glancing at the human girl running up the street. Nothing happened to her. She gave you this instead and left? Toko folds the piece of paper and carefully puts it in her pocket. Did I do something wrong? No, 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 uh, uh. Clay begins to wave his hands frantically. You did the best you could, and I'm proud of my little girl, but we, uh, oh, better get back home quick. Oh, oh, God. I think she's gonna kill me. My mom. As Clay walks back to the door to hell, that's <laughs> just right around the corner, Toko follows behind with her head still on earth. Did she tell me her name? It was Nadia, you dummy. Nadia. We were there. We even mentioned it. Hmm. <laughs> Aw, oh, yeah. <gasps> Is that Nadia? Uh-oh. Yeah! Do you feel that Soul Eater feel? Look at it, this, it feels so Soul eater -y. <laughs> I'm into it. Yeah, it's Nadia! Ye grill. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Ginkso? Ginzo? I hope she's not my mom. <laughs> I'm really worried that she's my mom. And Pelatrix. Aw, you're a cutie. The only demon kicked out of hell. A reject demon story. Man, I'm such a bad demon. I just think people are pretty cool. Humans weave thousands of myths about the underworld. Whether it's called Hell, Jikoku, Tartarus, or D.U., it is the place the damned are sentenced to suffer eternally for their sins. But while all good legends have their roots in truth, Hell is merely the realm of demons, farriers and caretakers of the underworld who guide the souls of mortals to the afterlife aboard the demon fairy. Whether it's sooner or later doesn't matter. All humans are destined to die at some point in their lives. Once a human reaches their end, a farrier is assigned to guide their soul to limbo. It is there that souls must purify themselves before they may ascend to the afterlife or return to the overworld to be reborn. These demons don't perform this duty without recompense, as with each soul a demon fairies, they savor a memory of that soul's life and the power that comes with it. The soul of a demon is incomplete, lacking in emotion and empathy. All that an incomplete demon can feel is a need to remove the void they are born with. The hunger for memory, emotion, and passion eternally drives them to consume the souls of humans. Millennia, millennia pass. Demons would surge in great and terrible masses upon the overworld to quell this hunger inside them. It was not long before starvation, infighting, and an occasional lawsuit forced, what? forced the demons to realize that the vast consumption of humanity was unsustainable. In order to survive without constant war between themselves, demons devised the demon code and the role of the farriers who escort the souls. With each passing and subsequent fairy, they obtain the necessary nourishment 
to get stronger and prosper. Most young demons are quick to ferry their first soul. It is a rite of passage into adulthood. However, one demon has failed every attempt given to her. The only zero soul demon in hell. Oh, this is her story. Oh, Toko, she's just too nice. Wait, do we go to demon school? <laughs> uh, good, good, good. In the upper middle row sits a young woman, her head resting on her textbooks, hoping not to faceplant into the desk. Each tick of the second hand feels slower than the last. Her mechanical pencil taps against her desk and sink to the clock, disconnected and unaware. Every couple of minutes, she glances at the clock. Fifteen minutes left. She flips to the blank page in her notebook and fills it with incoherent notes and doodles. Fourteen minutes left. This is the last class of the day and far from her favorite. She often wished her most boring classes were at the beginning of the day, but she was stuck with this schedule. Eight minutes left. Six. Four. No oh, it's Nadia! What? This isn't demon school. This is for real school. <laughs> I was fooled. Ah. Uh. The professor's in the middle of announcing the reading assignments for the next week. As it's a Friday, all of her classmates rush to leave as quickly as possible. She drags herself into the bustling hallway over the roar of freshmen. She's such a cutie! She hears the voice of her friend. Nadia! Oh, Steph, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you back in class. I was busy taking notes. Oh, don't worry. Everybody was bored by that lesson. We're all planning to go out to Mammoth Burger in a bit. Do you want to join us? Oh, no. I need to go home and study anyway, so you should go without me. Ah! <laughs> Do you have a date? No. <laughs> Don't look at me so suspiciously. I said I gotta go study. It's one of those things university students have to do. Okay, but I still don't trust you. Make it up to me when we catch up. Alright, later then. Uh, she already left. I wasn't making it up. I really do need to go study. Uh, life is so unfair. Oh, Toko, you are wearing nothing. <laughs> You're wearing literally nothing. I still, I mean, I love it. <laughs> Like, character design is dope, but like, no clothes. No clothes whatsoever. Alright. <clears throat> so what, that's it? I'm just being dismissed? I don't even get a second chance? A second chance? Toko, do you know what I'm holding? Ugh, my assignment record. Your assignment record containing 417 second chances. Most of these are ones we assigned to you in the hopes they'd be trivially easy. And how many of those have you succeeded at? None. You failed to take even the simplest opportunities presented to you. We have no reason to keep a reject like you around. Toko stands before the desk of Pelatrix, director of Limbo and caretaker of Hell's Demon Code. Pelatrix is impressively tall. Even ignoring her horns, it's said that due to her immense status in Hell, she can no longer ferry souls from the immortal world. As she is unable to sustain a human guise, and as a corollary, rumors and speculations surround Pelatrix's other means of gathering sustenance. Pelatrix adjusts her glasses and peers down at the child in front of her. Toko knows what she's about to say. As director, it's long past time to get my horns messy, so yes, you are being dismissed. There's no need for me to explain further, and certainly no need for you to ask for yet another second chance. Well, if I'm dismissed, then I'm banished to the human world. To live like a human, to <laughs> slowly become human. Yeah, well, you should have worried about the consequences before this happened. You were warned countless times, but you paid us no heed, as if you could just go through hell and complete. Realize this is more for our bookkeeping than concern about you. Drop off your insurance card and membership keychain on the way out. Have fun being a human. I hope it suits you better than life down here. Toko's eyes turn to the ground. She's doomed. It's true she's failed time and time again that she remains a zero soul human. And it's true, she has passed into adulthood without earning her horns. She hesitantly turns back to Pelatrix, who coolly flips through Toko's file. The imposing demon occasionally pauses to stamp a page before moving on, or to pull out a sticker roll and apply a large, red, frowny face over some records of Toko's failure. Once every instance of Toko's incompetence is notarized, Pelatrix neatly closes the folder, ties it shut with a bit of ashen twine, and unceremoniously dumps the whole pile into a grinding, munching paper shredder. Pelatrix taps her fingers against the desk, wordlessly waiting for Toko to leave. A new university building is under construction in the middle of Nadia's usual path, but doesn't make the walk home much longer. She could use the time outside, though. After sitting inside a stuffy classroom for hours, the fresh air is a blessing. Still, Nadia doesn't often have trouble staying awake. Something must be subconsciously stressing her out. 
She slows to a stop and considers what she's doing. Oh, jeez, maybe I should have just brought my books with me and went with Steph. For a moment, she seriously considers running back to try and catch Steph, but she's probably pretty far away by now. I'm already going in the opposite direction. Oh, well, I'll put on some music or something while I study. Putting an end to her hemming and hawing, Nadia continues on her way home. This, of course, is a disgrace. For her to be an adult and yet still be a zero soul, to not even have her horns? Here's the end of Limbo, the farthest, most desolate point of the city of Dis, the door to the ineffably mortal world where souls are sent to be reborn again. No one else is around. For a demon to be here by themselves is scandalous. There are doors that let one in and out, but this is one that Toko can't come back from. She's been banished to Earth, a crummy little place full of flimsy mortals obsessed with prolonging their own short lives. But you're gonna meet your friend who gave you her soul with crayon. It's gonna be precious. But maybe put on some clothes. She won't be able to return until she's become a full demon, for all Toko knows, that time will never come. Soon Nadia finds the sounds of the city annoying. She can't put her finger on it, but she just feels really restless and fidgety, even though she's on the move. Ugh, I am so out of it today. Man, how do I go from sleeping in class to being restless? Someone she passes by gives her an odd look. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking out loud. Nadia decides maybe she should just think about other things to make herself relax. She thinks about a recent song she heard on the radio and unconsciously begins humming it to herself. What was once an endless hallway is now a run-down alley, filled with refuse and only a dim hint of light. Toko steps cautiously into what she recognizes as the overworld. Cars rush back and forth on the road in front of her. People walk by, minding their own business. <gasps> you know what's gonna happen? Nadia is gonna be listening to music, not paying attention, almost get hit by a car again, and Toko's gonna save her, and they're gonna be like, haven't we done this before? Oh my gosh. Once she finally steps past the brick buildings, she has to cover her eyes. Was the light here always this bright? Nadia's hand bobs up and down as she walks down the sidewalk as if she's dribbling an invisible ball. Passers-by catch the tiniest hint of a song as she passes, though Nadia still doesn't notice her own humming. She feels warm, despite the autumn air. Today will be a good day, she decides. Starts off a bit iffy, but if she finds herself feeling better and relaxing, then dope. Maybe she'll call Steph to come hang over later. She steps lightly and, lost in the moment, Nadia pays no attention to where she's going. Guys, I called this. Toko surveys the pedestrians. Her stay doesn't need to be permanent. All she has to do is find someone who isn't using their soul. It's a demon's job, after all. She hates the thought of it, but she hates being here way more. Each step she takes grows more agonizing, more unsettlingly comfortable. Toko notices something odd out of the corner of her eye, wisps of clouds around her mouth with each breath. Demon smoke? That can't be natural for humans. It's cold, silly butt. Her skin feels strange as well, like all the heat of hell is escaping from her pores, leaving her a husk. Would she die if she didn't find a soul soon? You need to put on clothes, girl! Distracted by how rapidly the frigid earth chills her, she pays no attention to where she walks. Oh. Okay, I didn't call it. <laughs> oh, touching your boobles. <laughs> I uh, just want to take a second and let everybody know this is really the only point in the game that you get a screen like this. So rather than let you soak it all in, I'm going to cover everything up with cat faces. All right, boop, boop, boop. There we go. Okay, cool. Have a great rest of your day. Mwah, mwah, bye. My goodness. All right, sorry. Ow! Toko tumbles over something before she hits the ground. Her fall is stopped by a soft, squishy cushion. When her senses return, she, she catches a glimpse of the passers-by all staring straight at her, slowly taking in the confusion of the scene. Uh, um, excuse me. The request comes from beneath Toko. She looks down and the thing that cushioned her fall is right under her. She's sprawled on top of a human girl, one hand holding her head and the other planted firmly on the human's chest. Pens and papers are scattered in the gutter. Realizing what she's done, Toko lets out a squeak of surprise. She scrambles back while the crowd whispers and laughs amongst themselves. The other girl crawls to her knees and modestly wipes her sweater and skirt from the fall. She's slightly taller than Toko, not to mention curvy and round like a soft marshmallow stuffed in a sweater. Her complexion seems creamy and airy. She really is a marshmallow. As Toko sheepishly backs away, the human looks down, unable to hide her own blush after colliding with a half-naked girl. Oh, your knee, it's bleeding. Uh, what? Hold on, I got a first aid kit here. The girl reaches into her bag and pulls out a- No, but like- <laughs> I just- I find it totally unbelievable that she wouldn't be like, 
dog, why are you literally wearing no clothes? Oh well, okay, look, I'm focusing on this a little bit too much. I just feel like maybe her outfit would have drawn a lot more attention than it has so far. The girl reaches into her bag and pulls out a small white tin with a red plus on it. Once it's opened, Toko notices all sorts of strange swabs and bandages. Bleeding? Don't worry, I always come prepared for these sorts of things. She pulls out a swab and cleans the scrape before delicately applying one of the bandages. She chuckles awkwardly as she helps the half-naked girl up. Hey, you're shivering. Are you okay? Shivering? I... I don't know. I think I'm, like, cold or something? Cold? Yeah, I felt your skin. You're freezing. Here, you can wear my hoodie. The human opens her bag and pulls out a gray hoodie. It's fit more for her than for the demon. Toko runs it through her fingertips as if trying to figure it out, then pushes her arms into the sleeves. Ugh, this smells weird. Oh, <laughs> sorry, um... Here, well, you look cute in it, though. As Toko pulls the hoodie over her head, she realizes she's still being leered at. It's only then she realizes that the clothes she's wearing, the clothes she's worn for most of her life, are far more revealing than everybody else's. It's a strange, bizarre embarrassment that never occurred to her before. She isn't sure she should be annoyed by how easily the human filled this hoodie out. She leans in and sniffs it, this time out of curiosity, but before she can manage to get irritated, a different thought surfaces. Since when did she care about modesty? <laughs> Don't sniff it. I had to run a bit today, so it's like a little, you know. Toka's expression contorts into a grimace somewhere between pain and disgust as she looks at the human's silly smile. The girl only giggles softly. She must have noticed it, too. Toko's face turns several hues redder as she tries to avoid looking at the human. Then, before Toko can retort, the girl stands up and extends her hand. My name's Nadia. Come on, I'll walk you home. I'm Toko, uh... Well, the truth is, I'm not from here. I'm... Well, I mean, I'm... I'm visiting, so... Oh, that's fine. Then how about we go eat something? Eat? I don't have any... Uh... I don't have any money. Oh, fine then. It's my treat. Uh, but... Nadia simply waves her hand dismissively. Come on, I know a little place nearby. Toko doesn't have time to object, even if she wants to. Nadia grabs her hand and tugs Toko along, the demon flailing around in the hoodie like a small gray windsock. Before Toko can fight back, she feels her stomach rumble painfully. Hmm, well that's new. Aw, uh, yeah, noms. Toko pokes at her plate with a fork. She was unsure about what she was supposed to order when they got there, so she ended up with the cheapest thing she could find. There's a lot more things in the burger than the menu described. Probably Nadia's doing. Come on, eat up. I can hear your belly from here. Why? Huh? Uh, why what? Why did you buy me food after I knocked you over like that? What? Well, it's not like you did it on purpose. Besides, I can't leave a cute girl in trouble like that. Oh, I see. Toko cuts off pieces of the burger with the side of the fork. The smell of all the food has made her somehow hungry. Incredibly so. Being a demon, it isn't a situation she's used to. She takes the tiniest bite she can. The burger squishes around beneath her teeth. She swallows and stares down the rest of her f Huh? Her stomach feels less rumbly. Before she knows it, she's stuffing her face as fast as she can. As she eats, she notices something. Taste and texture slowly stimulate her taste buds. When she was still a full demon, human food seemed to taste like mush. It's only been a few hours, and yet... Nadia happily watches, seemingly mesmerized, but only follows with a salad. Are you feeling better now, Toko? Uh, yes. Uh, thanks. Sorry about that. Sorry, why? Well, I don't know, for imposing on you like this? Oh please, you're hardly imposing. When Nadia checks the time on her phone, the two realize they've eaten well into the night. Hmm, and it's a Friday, so let's go see a movie or something, okay? Uh, a movie? Sure, in the theater. Trust me, you'll have fun. I'm not sure what a movie is, honestly. Wait, you seriously don't know? Well, I'm kinda new here, so... Hmm, where are you from? You seem to have great English for somebody who's never heard of a movie before. Oh well, it doesn't matter. If you've never been to the theater, then it makes all the more important that we check it out immediately. Let's go see Jurassic World. Meanwhile, a lanky young woman looks- Oh, it's a lady?! Meanwhile, a lanky young woman looks over the facade of a fast food joint. She deems the faint smells wafting from the doors suitable. She enters. Excuse me, a fine hamburger and potato purveyors. I wish to partake of your goods and services. I'm gonna regret that later. 
Oh, uh, that'll be 20 prehistoric super stacks, 20 mammoth burgers, 15 carnivore super feasts, and, uh, 8 extra large volcano wages. It is 30 prehistoric super stacks, 25 mammoth burgers. I will also take 10 of your deluxe bacon apple crisps. Uh, so, um, 30 prehistoric super stacks, 25 mammoth burgers, 15 carnivore super feasts, uh, 8 large, extra large volcano wedges, and 10 deluxe bacon apple crisps. Yes, that is correct. Uh, so the total is, the total is $247.86. Yes, I've already prepared you a sufficient amount of human money. Oh, would you like that for here to go? To go. Going is good, and I'm very hungry. Uh, right. Oh, I wanted it to turn out that that person did not have any money. <laughs> was just like, yes, I believe I have a perfect amount of dollars for you. And just hands him, like, a penny. <laughs> He's like, mmm. <laughs> uh, that's what happened in the headcanon. That's what happened when we, <laughs> when we moved away to the cinema. <clears throat> you kept staring at that one poster. So why are we going to watch this thing that just seems to be about, I don't know, two people gently bumping each other's foreheads? Nadia puts a finger to her chin and hums in contemplation. But that isn't the kind of movie you take someone on a date to unless you know them really well. But this one's for boring people? Boring? Sometimes you just want to watch something sappy. Eh. Uh, what do you usually do for fun back where you're from? Uh, I mean, I didn't really have a lot of fun in where I'm from. I see. Well, did you want to have fun? Fun, huh? Toko isn't really sure what fun is. Hell for her was full of the pressures from above to succeed and become a proper demon. Maybe she wanted to have more fun than a proper demon would be permitted, or maybe her concept of fun was what was off. Maybe. Oh, the lights are dimming. Yeah, the movie's starting, so it's time to be quiet and watch. Why is your arm around my shoulder? Uh, 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 uh. I, I mean, I don't mind, but... Toko tries to focus on the flashing screen in front of her. Is this all human life is? It feels so calm and lethargic to simply sit down and watch something unfold. No demands to get involved, no feeling weak because she didn't end up on top. People on screen are getting into an argument because of their coffee? Toko isn't sure why this is worth arguing about and why they don't just try to attack each other and settle their differences that way. Must be another human thing to just talk. Nadia's certainly good at it. Soon, Toko finds herself struggling to pay attention to what's going on. She feels something pulling on her eyelids, but her attempts to swat it away are made futile by the fact that literally nothing is there. Uh, Toko, are you okay? I don't know, I feel weird. You must be getting sleepy. Here, if you want to stay up, drink this. What is it? Soda. It's pretty sugary. It's probably not like what you're used to, but it'll wake you up. Toko looks at the straw and takes an experimental sip feeling the fizzy liquid fill her mouth and slide down her throat. It's different from her usual demon food, which is often harsh sensations or textures rather than something with taste. Before she realizes it, she drank the entire cup and passed the empty container back to Nadia. Hey, I wanted some of that, but never mind. Nadia slumps slightly. She stares at a bowl of popcorn she had gotten for the two of them and mourns about how thirsty she's about to become. Oh, I'm the worst. Drink all of it. Did you like the movie? Uh, yeah? That's good. Tell me where you're staying and I'll show you where it is. Uh, you don't know where it is? Uh, wait, do you not have anywhere to stay? Seriously, you don't have any money and you don't have any place to stay? Oh, what a pickle you're in. Well, I mean, you can crash at my place for the night at least. Wait, I, I can't do that. You've already done too much already. Is this Toko? Is it this person? Oh, it totally is! Oh, Gin... 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 Ginzo? Ginsho? Gin... Jeez. How do I say this name? I'm gonna go with Ginjo. Ginjo? I'm gonna go with Ginjo, but I'll, I'll forget later. <laughs> Ginjo! What are you doing here? Oh, Toko, do you know her? Is it one of your friends? Cool, then you don't have to stay at my place. I mean, I'm, I'm into it if you want to, but... Yes, I came here on an assignment. I just had dinner. Many mammoth burgers, and it was very delicious. Yeah, well, thanks for the update. 
Ginjo is fairly strange, even for demons. Even though she should have no sense of taste as a proper demon, she eats far more than any other gluttony demon Toko's met. She's also thin. Too thin, almost as if she's starving for food even as she eats non-stop. Ginjo has taken to the strange habit of busking on street corners between assignments for money to buy everything her stomach desires. Uh, well, Toko, aren't you gonna introduce me to your friend? She's not my friend. Her name's Ginjo, and she's on an assignment here? She's from where I came from. Oh, well, my name's Nadia. It's nice to meet you, Ginjo. Hello. I like Nadia. She's not mean like Toko. Oh, my. Hey, why are you even bothering us anyway? If you have an assignment, then hurry up and finish it and get out of here. Toko's very antsy today. Is it this human? Is it because you are a... Don't finish that sentence. Toko shoves her palm against Ginjo's mouth. Ginjo pauses reflectively and pulls Toko's hand away. I see. Your sister. She's here and looking for you. The sudden mention of her sister leaves Toko somewhat rattled. Oh, shoot! It's the... It's the, the chick in the maid costume from the OP. They both got white hair. It's gotta be. Oh, she was terrifying looking. Okay. That chick's looking for me. <laughs> the sudden mention of her sister leaves Toko somewhat rattled. Maybe it's because of that and Nadia's prodding that Toko agrees to Nadia's offer. Ginjo wanders off, satisfied with her expert communication skills. Besides, she's nearly out of both food and the money to pay for it. As the two walk to Nadia's apartment, it's evident how lucky it was that Nadia and Toko met where they did. It seems both the school and the door to hell are very near to each other. Toko has other things on her mind, however. In the most populous part of the city, they enjoyed a meal and movie together, and now she'll go to Nadia's apartment. Sleep there and then what? Toko isn't really sure yet. Oh, we are finally back. It's not much, but it's home. When the two enter, Toko notices how small it is. No rooms to speak of beyond the bathroom. It has a tiny kitchen that Nadia makes do with. The apartment also only has one bed, positioned across from a small TV. Nadia insists Toko try to watch something on it while she prepares the bathroom. The prospect of that one bed suddenly makes Toko nervous. It's already late, and as soon as Nadia got home, she immediately began to prepare a bath. She's probably gonna go to sleep afterwards. This little room? You don't have a family? Huh? Uh, well I do, but me and my family don't really see eye to eye. Nadia pauses. But never mind. Are you sure you don't want to go find your sister? Toko avoids looking at the human. Well, how about a bath then? Of course not. You might try and spy on me. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I'm way more subtle than that. Say, Toko, why were you so dismissive toward Ginjo? She seems so sweet. D <laughs> Ginjo doesn't care about silly things like feelings. Sure she does. She looked sad. How could you even tell? Intuition. You should be nicer to her. She told you about your sister, after all. Then we can meet up with her tomorrow, and you'll be able to go home. So, isn't that good news, Toko? <sighs> yeah. Toko looks away briefly before standing up. Alright, I guess I'll go in, then. Great. Okay, maybe just a little peepa leap. In the bath, Toko puts her head on her knees and contemplates what happened to her today. The hot water is a poor comfort that only reminds her of hell and the coldness of the overworld. She wonders where she's going to sleep. Maybe she could sleep on the floor. Toko doubts the human would attempt to share a spot in the only bed with a complete stranger. Then again, Toko's already thought about how to warn Nadia off. When did she start caring about people spying on her when she was naked? Why does she even care about being exposed? In any case, the day was in many ways completely exhausting for Toko, and she finds herself subconsciously yawning for the first time. Another little bit of humanity. Nadia takes her shower once Toko is done. Occasionally, Toko hears noises like the soap falling in the tub while the shower runs. The demon rests her head on her knees again and wraps her arms around them. She doesn't have any clothes in her size, but Nadia offers her the washed hoodie and a pair of panties. The thought that worries Toko most is that they're actually very comfortable. With a rush of air, steam billows out of the bathroom and washes Toko's trains of thought away. She has a towel in hand and carefully dries her hair as she walks into the room. Ugh, hot showers are the best. I'm getting really tired. Is there somewhere I can sleep? Well, I only have one bed, so I hope you don't mind sharing it. But we might have to squeeze in, because there's not much room. Ugh, fine. Nadia, who turns red and grins stupidly to herself, walks to the end of the bed and sits next to Toko. The demon looks off to the side. She isn't sure why it's so difficult for her. Why she can't be like a normal demon. Why is she still here in the overworld right now? 
Nadia, noticing that something seems to bother Toko, tilts her head and looks at the girl's face. She pulls the towel off her head, folding it as she speaks. Is something wrong, Toko? I... I want your soul. <laughs> well, that's a little bit forward of you, Toko. I'm a demon, Nadia. I was sent here to reap a human soul. And it has to be your soul. A demon, huh? Uh... Those clothes you were wearing... I knew it was too early for Halloween. What? I, I'm serious right now. If it's you, I guess I wouldn't mind, but I don't know, shouldn't we, like, go on a date first? No, I mean, yeah... Uh, I'm turning off the lights. Be warned, though, I'm a little bit of a cuddler. I'm trying to be serious here. Are you not scared of me? Nope. Good night, Toko. She's the cuddler, huh? 